In the home lab and in business, the standard for connectivity is 10 gigabit. But when it comes to 25 gigabit or even 100 gigabit, the cost gets in the way really quickly. Getting to 100 gigs typically comes with a price tag of many thousands of dollars, which puts it far out of the reach of most home labs and small businesses. Or at least that was the case until Mikrotik dropped this guy here, the CRS510. An incredibly affordable network switch that features eight ports of 25 gigabit and two ports of 100 gigabit. So in this video, we're going for gold. We're going to 100 gig, baby. Hey there, home lobbers, self-hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. If I told you that you could add 100 gigabit connectivity to your server rack for less than $900, you'd probably think I was crazy, especially when you see some of the prices of switches that are 100 gig capable that are on the market today. A few weeks back, Mikrotik reached out to tell me that they now offer just that, a switch that features two 100 gigabit ports and eight 25 gigabit ethernet ports, all in a compact switch that also has some interesting tricks up its sleeve. But before we get into the good stuff here, let's get the disclaimer out of the way first. Mikrotik did send us the CRS510 for free, but this is not a sponsored video, and as always, my opinions are my own. So with that, let's get a look at this switch. This is the Mikrotik CRS510 8XS 2XQ IN network switch, a little 100 gigabit switch that Mikrotik calls its Swiss army knife of network switches. Let's start with the connectivity first. The CRS510 features eight 25 gigabit SFP28 ports, two 100 gigabit QSFP28 ports, a single 1 gigabit Ethernet port for out-of-band management, and a serial interface for direct console access. Mikrotik's published performance data shows that the CRS510 has a non-blocking layer 2 throughput of roughly 385 gigabits, meaning this switch can essentially run every port at full speed without blocking or slowing down. The other trick this little switch has up its sleeve is the numerous ways it can be powered. The CRS510 features dual redundant power supplies, which is unusual for a switch in this price range and shows that it was designed to be used in demanding network roles where uptime is critical. However, that's not the only way you can power the CRS510. The system is actually capable of receiving power from four different sources in total. We've mentioned the first via the dual redundant PSUs, but the CRS510 can also be powered using PoE++ on the out-of-band management port, via a DC barrel connector, and finally via a two-pin DC power terminal, making this switch the first I've seen to offer 100 gig on PoE, not to mention three other means of power. The CRS510 is housed in a fully metal enclosure and is actively cooled by dual 40mm fans in the back. Let's open up this switch and see what's packed in there. Opening up this little unit is easily done by removing six screws across the top of the unit and then sliding off the top lid. Once opened, we can get a better look at the power distribution and mainboard of the unit. The CRS510 is powered by a Qualcomm QC8 9531 CPU running up to 650 MHz and based on the MIPS architecture. The system also features 128MB of RAM and 32MB of flash storage for the OS. Speaking of the OS, the CRS510 ships with router OS version 7. Under the heatsink in the middle is the powerhouse of this switch, the Marvell 98DX4310 packet processor that handles the heavy lifting of switching packets for the 400 gigabits worth of throughput available in this unit. As mentioned earlier, the CRS510 is actively cooled by two 40mm PWM fans in the back of the case. It's nice to see standard PWM connectors being used, and while we think the CRS510 is a quiet switch, you could swap out the fans for quieter ones if you needed to. For power consumption, fully fitted with transceivers, the CRS510 will consume a maximum of 45 watts. Finally, you can pick up the CRS510 8XS 2QX IN on Amazon right now for around $845 US, which feels like a steal, honestly. All right, details out of the way, let's talk about my current network infrastructure for a moment and how I plan on integrating the switch into my rack. Currently, all of my switching is unified, so the CRS510 will be an outlier in terms of gear. However, I'm not really concerned about mixing network gear because that's what IEEE standards are all about. My current physical network looks like this. My core switch is a Unify Pro Aggregation switch where currently all of my 10 and 25 gig connections are made to my servers. I call this switch my core primarily because it's the fastest switch in my network and it's also the RSTP root. Downstream from the ProAg is my Tor or Top of Rack switch, which is a Unify USW Enterprise 24 PoE switch that uplinks via redundant 10 gig LACP connections to the core. There are a variety of other smaller downstream Unify switches that serve 1GB Ethernet throughout the house and my production areas, but they're of no real importance here. 
With the introduction of the Mikrotik CRS510, my intention is to uplink one of its 25 gig ports into my ProAg switch, set to trunk all VLANs for simplicity. In terms of configuration for my Unify stack, that's all I'll need to do. From there, I'll move my 25 gig connected proxinator host from the Unify ProAg over to native 100 gig on the CRS510 and configure that port to be native VLAN 1 and trunk the rest. I'll also be moving my new TrueNAS host I built recently from 25 gig over to 100 gig via a new to me 100 gig Mellanox Connect X4 card. That port will be configured to native VLAN 10 only as that's all that's needed. You're probably asking yourself, why are you only connecting a single 25 gigabit uplink port to the rest of your network? And the simple answer is, that's really more than I need. Everything downstream from the ProAg is one gig with the exception of my two gig Zipply internet connection. And there's no need for dual uplinks for redundancy because there is no redundancy between these two switches since they're both in the same rack and powered by the same UPS. The real need for 100 gig here is between my Proxmox host, which runs all my virtual machine workloads, and my primary storage, where several of those systems consume data. That's where the full benefit of the throughput will be felt. All right, let's move on to phase two. Before we rack and stack the switch, let's get it fully configured first. Mikrotik offers a few different methods for configuring their gear. You can absolutely configure everything via console, a built-in web GUI, or via their full-featured management application known as Winbox. I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't spent much time working with Mikrotik gear in the past, so I think I'll take a crack at configuring this unit using their full-featured Winbox software first, and we'll start that by downloading Winbox from their website. Winbox supports Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, so you've got all of your bases covered. Let's fire it up. This is the Winbox application. In the right window pane is a list of detected hardware, of which you can see my CRS510 listed at the top, showing its MAC address and current IP address on the network. Let's get logged in here and quickly run through how I've configured the CRS510 for my network. This switch is only going to be doing layer 2 functionality, so the setup is really quite simple. All I basically needed to do was enable VLAN functionality and then define my VLANs. This is all done in the bridge section, so we'll head over to bridge on the left hand side and take a look at my configuration. I have a single bridge that was created by default, and for what I need, it's perfect. But I did need to enable VLAN filtering on the bridge, and to do that, I double-click on the bridge entry in the table, expand VLAN below, and clicked the VLAN filtering checkbox. Now over in the VLANs tab at the top, we can see the six total VLANs that I've defined on the switch. VLAN 10, 666, 100, 3208, and 1212 are manually created by me, with the default VLAN being added when we enabled VLAN filtering on the bridge. If we open up one of the entries, like VLAN 10, we can see how Mikrotik manages tagged versus untagged VLANs. I've tagged VLAN 10 to all of the 25 gig ports and the second 100 gig port, and untagged VLAN 10 on the first 100 gig port. It's definitely a different way of displaying VLAN information compared to Unify, but it's really not bad at all. Just a few more configs to touch on here. Under IP on the left, and services, I disabled unnecessary services like FTP and Telnet from running on the switch. If I need to access the command line remotely, I'll use SSH because that's far more secure than Telnet or FTP. It's always smart to disable unnecessary services that you don't intend to use. The last thing I did on this unit was update the system to the most recent stable version of router OS. That's done via the system section on the left, and then packages. We'll check for updates again by clicking on check for updates on the left, and we can see that the installed version and the latest version match, so we're good on updates. Router OS has an incredible amount of functionality available in it, and as you saw, we're really only scratching the surface in terms of what it can do and what we want this switch to do. The CRS510 does have some layer 3 functionality that we could enable if we needed to, but that doesn't suit my router on a stick network that I currently have in place now, and since the switch is only going to be used primarily for its 100 gig connectivity, layer 2 is just what I need and really nothing more. All right, let's get the switch installed and cabled into my server cabinet and then get to my final thoughts. I'm going to do something different with this switch compared to the other switch gear I have in my rack. Instead of mounting the CRS510 facing out the front of the cabinet, I'm going to mount it facing out the rear. This makes more sense to me in terms of connectivity of the 100 gig connections between my storage and my Proxmox hosts, and because it's so low powered, I'm not concerned about excessive heat, though I will keep an eye on the switch temps over time just in case. The last thing to do is connect up my Proxmox host and the storage server, and we're done. Let's talk about my final thoughts here. $845 for what amounts to a total of 400 gigabits worth of switch bandwidth is insane. This switch also supports breakout cabling, so if you didn't have 100 gig devices now, you can split the 100 gigs into four 25 gig connections, meaning this switch gives you the flexibility of a total of 16 
25 gigabit ports, which for this price point is unheard of. Then there's just the sheer amount of ways you can power this switch. As I mentioned earlier, the fact the system has dual PSUs tells me that Mikrotik has designed the system to be installed and used in business critical environments where uptime is important. The fact that it's also so power efficient that it can be powered by Poe++ kind of blows my mind as well. Setting up this switch was painless, but I will caution you that if you're coming from the land of ubiquity and that's all you know of network configuration and management, you're going to have a bit of a shock. Winbox or the switch's web management interface feel legacy still in a world dominated by ubiquity, Meraki, and other web-based controller platforms. That being said, there is no better price for 100 gigabit networking anywhere that I know of, so if you're looking to upgrade your home lab to 100 gig or your small business, this is the switch for you. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buy some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you're finished watching this video, how about checking out this place over here about the great hardware reviews we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great piece of hardware, we can help.